this is the video, people. This is the video that has caused a meltdown across social media in the last 24 hours. I was a little surprised to see so many people angry that the Arsenal players are signing the shirt here of this young mascot, but give it no attention. I'll tell you why I was surprised at the outrage a little bit later. Of course, hit the like button, subscribe, go download and listen to the Top 6 podcast now. Lots to delve into on this show as well, not just this Arsenal outrage. There's some stuff around Saka and the abuse he's getting online, how Man United have been dragged into this situation as well. We're also going to take a look at what Didier Drogba has said at Chelsea Football Club and a big claim from Rio Ferdinand about Man United and Arsenal seasons. All of that to come on the show, so stay with us. But the outrage surrounding this clip, I'm not going to lie, it's knocked me a little bit sideways. It's again made me doubt the, 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 the brain capacity of some football fans it really has. Everybody was outraged. Why are they not giving her any attention? Why are they not talking to her? That is it's terrible of, of Arsenal Football Club to do this. That's been met, though, with a tweet from her father who has said that my daughter had a lovely time as mascot at Arsenal. There was only a small window to meet the players, and she enjoyed it very much. Odegaard is her favorite player. Um, so hold, um, so to hold uh, his hand on the pitch was very special. Her father very much coming out, and I put it in big for anyone that can't read it, I very much spoke about how it was an amazing day. She had a great time. There's no issue here. What is the outrage about? More footage has subsequently been released of the players later on in the day being far more open and kind of uh, giving her a little bit more time and attention. I just don't understand why fans can't engage their brains ahead of time, why everybody's got to look to be outraged to demonstrate their moral superiority over everybody. Oh, I've got, this is a great chance for me to prove to everybody that I'm a good guy. I'm a good woman. I'm a great person. I say how bad this is, rather than realizing that she probably got the attention later. She probably had a wonderful time. It is a bad bit of PR from Arsenal. It's not the greatest video to release. But at the same time, the overreaction was crazy. But what did this overreaction lead to? Of course, it led to Arsenal fans going out their way and finding footage of Man United in a hotel, walking past fans with shirts to signs and ignoring them, essentially. Ignoring them. And this was met with a, a tweet. The audacity of some Man United fans trying to talk about the video of our players not even interacting with the little girl, have um, have a cheek uh, to even say a word. Of course, this is the guy that posted this video. So man spent his whole day looking for this video of Man United. And it isn't a good look for Man United players to be walking, walking away and not signing. But they're clearly in a hotel, have been told to go straight to the coach because they're probably traveling to a game and there's time restrictions. Engage your brain. There's no outrage here. There's no outrage. If they stop and do one, they might have to stop and do 10. And that could be 20-odd 20, 20 players, meaning they could be late, meaning that the, the kickoff can be delayed, which in respect is disrespecting the fans in the ground and could cause problems. So Arsenal fans being attacked, Man United being attacked. I've seen Chelsea and Liverpool. I've seen all manner of fans get involved in this. How disgraceful. We could all probably waste a day, waste a day of our lives going on the internet, finding footage of your players ignoring fans and go, look how bad you are. This kind of weird circus to prove that oh, my club is better than your club. Come on now. Like, it's dead banter, if, you, if that's what you're doing it for. There's no moral superiority in this because there'll be footage of all of our players doing this at certain times. Just grow up and let's just, let's just get back to talking about the football. Oh, 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 oh. Racially abused <laughs> after the game. I don't know if you saw the thing, Lee, right? It's ridiculous. It's disgusting, right? Disgust. This guy that has been our best player this season, right? For He's three been years. absolutely unbelievable. Last season, season before, every time he puts that shirt on, he gives absolutely everything for this club. The one mistake he makes, that's the first penalty I've seen him missing an Arsenal shirt. The one mistake he makes, there's fans or a fan, or I think there was a couple of them in it, you think that they can racially abuse him. His colour is all of a sudden a Initial. problem. It yeah. wasn't a problem when he was scoring goals. He was our guy, Bukaya, star boy, right? Now he misses a goal. He's a monkey. He's an N-word. He's a Robbie's, Robbie's spot on here, of course. 
I, I'm not going to reiterate anything that he has said about the racial abuse. We know how heinous and nasty and disgusting that is. It goes without saying. Robbie's spot on. But this is what happens when we promote a culture that abuse is okay. Because it gives a breeding ground to people to continue to push the envelope, move the needle, push the boundaries of what is and is not acceptable. And abusing a player like, just forget racial abuse for a second. Any Arsenal fan abusing Saka over the penalty miss isn't an Arsenal fan. Abusing him for having a bad game, missing a penalty, is reprehensible. But when you look at the accounts that typically do this, they're very often no names, always got like a player avatar. They need always have a particular agenda against, uh, against, they may hate a certain group of players and love another group. And football fans give these people credence and they give them attention and they grow. And what they end up doing is they, they want to do one of two things. They either show their true colors and show their true, true inner selves and racially abuse or homophobically abuse. Or what they do is they go, right, what can I do to get more laughs? They they, tr they go too far. They think it's, oh, this will, be, this will make people think I'm funny because they're a bunch of mindless fools and children. Maybe a combination of all three. And it's just embarrassing to see some Arsenal fans stoop. Listen, to, to that level is, is wrong at all moments, at all times. But even just people abusing Saka, Arsenal fans abusing him after a bad penalty miss, you know, hang your head. Hang your head in absolute shame. Uh, 60 minutes of the game. I think you probably saw why I picked the lineup because we had. I, I can't believe what I just heard there. 60 minutes in, and you can see why I picked the lineup that I did. Kante up front. Gallagher up front. Come on. Is Frank Lampard that delusional? Big energy, big organisation in the team. Calls Real Madrid a lot of problems. Um, so Frank, they let you have the ball, mate. They knew you weren't going to score. And they didn't even have a great time of doing that and you still couldn't punish them. If Raheem Sterling gets the chances that Kante gets, he scores. The openings that Conor Gallagher found himself in, I think Jao Felix does a better job. Man, the guy is out here praising himself for losing... Four games on the bounce. The worst run in 30 years. He's played eight games as a manager in 2023. Lost all eight of them. And he's out here talking about how good his team looked. Didier Drogba has come out and said, I knew this club uh, with a certain class during the Abramovich era. But today I find it lacking. It's very hard for me to see how they got rid of certain people. They should go back. Uh, to, they should go back. Um, to the principles and values they had. I don't recognize my club anymore. Damning words there from Didier Drogba. Hugely damning, hugely powerful words. And I think when they talk about people they've removed, he, he may be talking about board level. He's probably talking about Thomas Tuchel. And listen, he, he'll love Lamp. Him and Lampard are probably, probably, I'm just guessing here, very close part of Chelsea's greatest ever teams. But the way Lampard's out here protecting himself and his decisions is part of the reason that Chelsea are in this mess. They've hired one of the worst managers in Premier League history, a man who will not get a big job ever again to try and tide them over and fix things when there's been problems going on. And he's out here in the media shamelessly protecting himself it, it's it is just utterly utterly embarrassing i want your thoughts and i want your feelings on that in the comment section below let's take a little listen out of what rio ferdinand has said about this season of arsenal and man united it's very interesting i finished third and just have the one trophy they've had a better season that's than rubbish you. if you're a player let's go back and listen to that again and hear joel there that's rubbish straight away let's have a little listen just listen from the beginning. Don't win the league. Man United finish third and just have the one trophy. They've had a better season. That's than rubbish. You. If you're a player and you finish third and you win a trophy, right? Carabao Cup, wherever it is, right? And a team above you finish second and win no trophies. Who's the happier player? Where I want to get your view views on that, people. I want to understand what you think about that. Who would be the happier group of players? Man United finished third and win a Carabao Cup, and Arsenal come second with no trophy. 
who will be the happier group of players at the end of the season? For me, I do think it's a, a very nuanced conversation. And in this instance, I'm picking Man United. And I'll tell you as to why. And before Arsenal fans go crazy, let me talk before you put your comments in below. If Man United were treading water and we came third and scraped the Carabao Cup, but there was no belief that next year we could go on to challenge for the Premier League title, I would say Arsenal, who I believe will challenge again next year. But because I think Man United will be in the pack of title challenges next year, the fact that they've come third this year and won a trophy, the players are going to be happy because they can feel that progression moving forward. However, just because Man United fans and players may be happier than Arsenal at the end of the season doesn't mean that Arsenal have had a bad year. And this, this is what people that lack critical thinking will do. Rio's saying we had a bad season. No, he isn't saying you've had a bad season. I'm not saying you've had a bad season. I'm just suggesting that Man United fans and Man United players may be happier with theirs. Not for a single moment have Arsenal had a bad or disastrous year. But I think with Man United's trajectory and winning a trophy, it will make it better. Now, if Man United add an, another trophy to this, we may, we may, we may not. It changes the complexities of that conversation once more. But I think it's a brilliant question to pose. I'd love to get your thoughts and feelings in the comments sections on this. Make sure like buttons have been hit, by the way, before you leave. And that you're subscribing to the channel as well. Turn that bell notification on and download the latest episode of the Top 6 on Spotify. Listen, my people. Until next time, take care, goodbye, God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Peace.